Street is a new Blumhouse tilt movie made by Lee Winnell, also written by him. It stars Logan Marshall Green, who plays a technophobe in the distant near future. There are some futuristic elements, but because of the budget, there are certain elements that are pretty much more modern. It's like a good combination of both. And this technophobe is named Gray Trace, who is married to his wife, Asha, and they're pretty happy together until an accident happens, and not only is she dead, but also he's a quadriplegic. However, there is a guy who offers him this new chip called STEM, puts it in his spine, and he's magically able to walk again. Until this thing starts talking to him and is able to take control of his body, and now he's convinced that he has to track down the people responsible for the accident, and when the chip takes over, he turns into quite the badass. I know a little bit about this movie. I knew there was a buzz beforehand because it premiered at South by Southwest and it got a lot of people hyped. And when I saw the trailer, I was like, this is a really unique concept and it looks like it has a lot of fun, gory action sequences, but is there gonna be anything under the surface? Because we've kind of seen stuff like this happen before, like Hardcore Henry, which came out in 2015. A lot of people were buzzing about that. Like, that's one of the best action movies of this time. And when I saw it, I was like, yeah, it's fun, but I mean, it's missing a little something like a good story, some memorable characters except for one. So I was a little worried that maybe Upgrade could fall under that same thing. Because I actually do admire a lot of Lee Winnell's works, and I am interested to see what else he does in the industry. But I was just a little worried that this could probably not live up to the certain hype that a lot of people were setting. I walked out of this movie quite amazed. Um, amazed that I loved it so much and also just amazed at the movie. This is fantastic. Like, it's actually one of my favorite films of the year. Lee Winnell has crafted something truly spectacular here. And I really do mean it. A lot of this film is some of the best direction that Lee Winnell has ever done. Like, a lot of the stuff that he's directed before, I think just Insidious 3, correct me if I'm wrong, that was a solid movie, but this, like, like it, it takes the filmmaking to a whole nother level. The fight scenes in general, gotta talk about this real quick, because that's the thing everyone's buzzing about, is just the action sequences look phenomenal, and they do because of the sound design. The sound design was really cranked for my theater, so every hit left an impact. Also, the gore is utilized very well. It's not there to just be there, like to just glorify everything. It actually serves a purpose to the story, and I really love that. That's the thing that surprised me the most was the story. But the action scenes themselves, what make it all really work is the actor, Logan Marshall Green, who has to convince you that he's not in control of his body when he's beating people up. There are, of course, later moments in the film where he looks totally convinced of what he's doing because he's getting more used to that style, but in the beginning of the movie when he's doing all this stuff that he's just totally shocked by, he has to sell you that he is not in control and that everything that he's doing with his limbs is totally against him. And because of his performance and just the great direction alone by Lee Winnell, like, this movie has some of the best action scenes of the year. Maybe the best of the year. I know Infinity War is pretty amazing and so is Deadpool 2, but Jesus Christ, the stuff you can do with low budget stuff here, like the way they move the camera too, to like really give you that not in control kind of feel, like it's the way they shot everything in this movie was quite outstanding, especially during the action sequences where they have so many great angles going on that are capturing every choreographed moment perfectly. I never felt like I was missing anything with any of the cuts going on. Like, I always felt like I was seeing everything that they shot, like in glorious still camera, and I loved it. It also helps that the score, oh my god, this is a great electronic synth kind of score. It really does add a lot to the suspense that you have when watching it. I, that's why I really like synth scores a lot too, because they can add a lot to an action sequence. But aside from the action sequences, Logan Marshall Green is also still good. I know a lot of people have been giving him a hard time because he looks like Tom Hardy and he's not as good as Tom Hardy. I've actually liked him in Prometheus before and I also liked him in The Invitation. I don't know how many people have seen that movie, but I really liked him in that. This one, though, is definitely his best performance. This character that he plays goes through a lot, and that's one thing that really surprised me is that there is a lot of sweet emotions in here. In the first couple minutes or so, I thought they did a really good job building up that relationship between him and his wife. They showed they had really good chemistry. It seemed like they were an actual couple. So when, of course, as you know, from the trailers when the wife is dead you really do feel for this guy and when he gets that chip in his neck you kind of start to see him get more confidence like I can actually redeem myself for that night that I wish I could prevent 
And speaking of the chip stem, Simon Maiden is the voice for him, and he's very good as this guy. He's just doing like a typical like robot voice, but the way this guy interacts with Logan Marshall Green's character, it's actually quite good. Because for the whole movie, it could have just been, I'm gonna tell you what to do now, I'm gonna talk to you in a generic computer voice. But they actually play up certain comedic elements about their chemistry that I thought really worked. Like, it surprised me the amount of humor in here, and it surprised me the, the amount of humor that actually worked. Because I haven't done a review for this movie yet, but Insidious The Last Key, Lee Winnell in that, I thought he was terrible comedically, and I've never thought he was terrible comedically before. So it was good to kind of refresh myself, like, finally, something funny with Lee Winnell. I think he did a really good job writing for these two characters, and also just the story in general. Because you walk into the movie thinking there's going to be a lot of fun action sequences, but I want a little bit more. I want some substance. And there's actually a lot of great substance, and of course, without spoilers, certain things that go down in the film, honestly, I didn't really see coming, especially the third act of this movie, where it just goes off the rails insane for me. Like, it's such a great ending. Like, this has one of the best endings of the year for me, because for me, this isn't a movie that BSs you. It's not a movie that makes up the rules as it's going along. It feels like they were always defined by rules set up by the futuristic society that they already established. So when things start to go down later, you don't start thinking like, well, that's insane, that's unbelievable, I, do I don't feel like I'm in this world anymore, I'm distracted. Like, you always feel like you're fully immersed in the environment that you are in with Logan Marshall Green. And for a cheap movie that only really has a few shots here and there that remind you that you are in the future, that's actually pretty fantastic that they were able to convince me that I was in a futuristic world with Great Trace the entire time. If I had to have an issue with this movie, and it's really only one thing that isn't even that big of an issue for me, and I'll explain why. The villain characters in this movie, the ones behind the accident that uh, Great Trace has to hunt down, there's nothing really that much to them as far as like story and motivation and all that. However, number one, their performances are actually really good. Like they come across as just the perfect kind of creeps that you just love to hate and you just hope get killed eventually in the most gruesome way, of course. But when you actually see the gruesome stuff, you're kind of like, oh God, that's nasty. And number two, this also applies to the script. There are certain things that go down later in the movie that on a repeat viewing, I might actually go, all right, I can kind of get behind these guys a little bit more since I know what happens later in the film. It doesn't really excuse the fact that there's still not a whole lot to them when they're on screen beforehand, but there is something going on with them that I actually really quite liked and I thought was a little bit unpredictable. And Betty Gabriel, who plays the cop, sure, she's the determined cop character, wants to find out the truth, and of course she wants to work with Great Trace because he's very close to the case, but he's kind of pulling away and she has no other choice, like that kind of character. Betty Gabriel still gives a good performance in it, and the cop character herself, I thought she was a nice addition. Like, her character trope is a character trope we've seen before in other films, but she wasn't annoying me, and I thought the performance worked, and also seeing where the character ends up is like, Dang, like I really like that. So overall, I got phenomenal fight sequences with great use of gore and a low budget. You have great direction, great score, great colors, great cinematography, and a great lead performance from Logan Marshall Green. But you also have the story there, the substance that I was so craving before seeing the film. The thing I was worried about before walking into the film, is this gonna have a story that I'm gonna get behind? Am I gonna walk out of this film feeling like I was completely subverted in every way? And yeah, pretty much. I'm gonna give Upgrade an A. Like I said earlier, Logan Marshall Green's character is fantastic, though there are some uses of characterization that are definitely lacking as far as what the script does with them and how they play a part in the overall film. I, I really love them and I thought they played their part very well and they all fit perfectly. It's not like they feel out of place or from a different movie. Like they all fit into this world that they built up so well and Lee Winnell, you can really tell he was very passionate about this, and I'm glad he made this, because this is, in my opinion, his best film. But if you've seen Upgrade, leave in the comments below what you thought of it, and as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.